your ear. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, may you get glory unto yourself, Lord, especially through the message the prophet brought us, and may it be brought to our attention in the manners the prophet said to break it down and feed to the people. We're just asking that that be not only required of us, Lord, but fulfilled in us, each and every one of the speaker in here, Lord, so that your name might be glorified. We know this is important in this hour, Lord, because the message is actually separating. At the same time, it is feeding and transforming and getting the people ready, leading to perfection. May we realize that and not only accept it for the truth of what it is, but rejoice in it and make this our high calling in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now we're dealing with number seven of things that are to be. And of course, it's quite some time ago, but we saw on page nine, paragraph 28, that Brother Branham declared the prophets were only reflectors and not the source of the word of God. Of course, he is referring to himself in a very certain sense. And as God's mouthpiece, he is assuring the people that the word of God never fails, but assuredly and never failingly uh, comes to pass by being manifestly fulfilled in its proper season to the people to whom it is applied and also not only manifested to them by revelation, but they themselves become manifestors of it, not in the sense that their prophets or people are producing something, but that God is fulfilling his word in them according to his promise. Something like Abraham and Sarah, they had gotten to the place where <clears throat> it was absolutely ridiculous to even begin to think that they could have a son. But you notice the word of promise was fulfilled to them and in and through them. So that's what you're looking at. In the particular case of Jesus promising his own to be with him in a prepared place, he actually makes an invitation to accept that promise. And of course, Brother Branham brings that out because uh, uh, Brother Branham is talking about the fact that uh, if Jesus made a commitment that uh, his people would be with him, then that commitment would be completely fulfilled. But it's invitational, as Brother Branham said, because uh, salvation is not without choice. It's not without means. And so therefore, if a door has been opened unto glory, it would be true that people must come through that door. And even before they come through that door, as the psalmist said, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee. <clears throat> to dwell in your courts and so on. But in paragraph 29 and continuing, he starts teaching on predestination, that though a person at the time of salvation does not know or have any idea concerning his predestination to the kingdom, yet those sitting there like that, in that room, that church, there could have, um, uh, there could be those who deemed it so on the ground that he had already said <clears throat> that they were there not merely because they wanted to be, but because they were predestinated. Brother Branham uh, used more than once that phraseology. He said, I am predestinated to be here preaching, and you're predestinated there to be listening. Now, of course, uh, that's quite a thought because uh, <clears throat> unless there was some type of vindication, actual proof, uh, it you could not possibly uh, take that from a mere man speaking his own words because that's the con artist game. That's a con artist game of, of Mrs. Eddy. It's a con artist game of Mrs. Miller, the Seventh-day Adventist prophetess. It's the con artist game of the, of the uh, you know, the uh, Armstrong bunch <clears throat> and uh, Mormons right down the line. It's a con artist game. And it seems that there are more people wishing to be conned than those who would be right at any cost. You know, live, die, sink, swim. They don't want that. So for Brother Brandon to be standing there, that mixed, mixed group, there would be those who really take him as God to the people and those who would say no and they would argue the point of predestination. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, one of the first things that people came up against in Brother Brandon's ministry is teaching was predestination. So you could see this would raise the hackles on the Pentecostals and different ones coming in from outside, and perhaps would also throw for a loop uh, some of those people who claim they believe the message because 
just before that time, as I mentioned, perhaps the last time I was here <clears throat> on that Sunday, that I was absolutely abused by a man because he could not believe that uh, I was listening to Brother Branham correctly and he was listening incorrectly. Uh, and the way he swung to Joseph later on makes me realize he never did listen. What's Joseph going to do? The only thing he can do is repeat word for word what his father taught because he's not vindicated and there can ever be. No fivefold minister, prophet, or whatever he is can never be vindicated. There's no way about it. It's, it, it does, only a word prophet of that caliber, Brother Branham. <clears throat> now, mentioning here then that Brother Branham is talking about those uh, sitting there, uh, they should have already caught the drift of the strong statement of predestination. So that being the case, uh, uh, they were predestinated to be there. He was predestinated to be there. The word of the hour or season should then of necessity come to them through him. And uh, that, of course, may have been caught by some, no doubt was caught by different ones. And right away the thought comes up, well, who is this William Branham anyway? Who does he think he is? After all, bless God, I've had some experiences. Well, you see, they, they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue to Scripture because they don't want to admit the possibility of them being wrong. It's the same old story all the time. Well, bless God, I had this happen, and being me, I got to be right because you know, you know. It's like Edgar Casey. You hear more and more about Edgar Casey. <clears throat> and Edgar Casey started out as a, to the best of his knowledge, a true believer in Christ and salvation through the blood and the whole bit. But because of the fact that he could go into this trance and uh, put himself under, and you could talk to him and that voice speak through him, there's a clever fellow from Dayton, Ohio here, went down into Kentucky, <clears throat> and there he uh, had Mr. Casey go into a trance. And they, of course, uh, recorded what he was saying. And the man asked him a question concerning uh, the, uh, not the transmigration of souls, but the... Uh, you know, your soul passing on the next one. Uh, anyway, uh, after, after having asked him all those questions of reincarnation, and Edgar Casey came out of his trance with that voice speaking through him, using his voice, that reincarnation was correct. Why, right away he said, how can I be wrong? i got to be right. I'm the wonderful Edgar Casey. I could tell all these things the doctors don't know. Why, look at me. He was already snared by the devil and took that to show that he was of the devil. And yet, uh, the same man the living today would no doubt call himself a great Christian <clears throat> and try to bring reincarnation and Christianity together. You can't do it. Because Christianity depends upon a resurrection, which means what went down comes up. That's why the only hope I've got is the true seed of God coming up, because Lee Vale himself does not want to come up. I'd watch the whole mess once more. Huh? Yeah, thank God the body of sin is gone, 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 gone. Amen. First, if I could throw it in the lake of fire and watch it squirm, I would do so, but it doesn't need to. The maggots will get it. <coughs> Go to gases, rashes, whatever. And those little somatides in there, I guess that's what it did at all. We'll come back. Now, of course, it is not likely that many caught what Brother Branham was saying. Brother Branham, as already stated, begins to teach them with great authority on predestination and very particularly on the physical or natural aspect of it <clears throat> all the way back to God himself. So we're going to start reading, and I'm going to take liberty here to read, but I want to read, then I'll come back and read the whole thing all together because I'm looking at a certain continuity here. Now, in paragraph 29 on page 9, as I have my notes here, Brother Branham said, but notice, in this world that is to come, for there is a world to come, just like your birth here, as I said, you were prepared. God knew you would be there. Now, I'm going to keep reading on the next page, paragraph 31. See, you were all pre-planned by God. All of you. Every bit. Nothing happens by chance with God. He knows all about it. It's all pre-planned. Like he said, uh, how many fleas there have been, how many times they bat their eyeballs, how many take, make a pound of tallow. It's all pre-planned, planned for many generations back so you could be here tonight. 
Did you know that? Just think that you at one time, I'll repeat this again, you at one time was in your father, in the gene of your father. Now, he didn't know you at that time, neither did you know him. You see, then you were put in the bedding ground in the womb of a mother through holy wedlock. Then you became a person expressed. doesn't say you became a person, it's a person expressed. You always were a person. Now you're expressed. <clears throat> now he's telling how it was done. And of course, it goes out like a lead balloon. You became a person expressed in the image like your father. Then there's fellowship. Now the only way that you can be born that you, you can be a son or daughter of God, is that you have eternal life. And there's only one form of eternal life, and that's God's life. Only one form of eternal life, that was God. Uh, therefore, to be a son of God, you had to be in him always. Eternality. The gene of your life, spiritual life tonight, remember the spiritual life with God being Adam, breath of life, which was the soul, was in God, the Father, before there was even a molecule. That's like Christ came forth, formed that light. What did it form from? The very substance of God was in God, the Father, before there was even a molecule. See, and you are nothing. Now, that's the normal expression people use, but that's not true. You are nothing but. In other words, <clears throat> it's pure. Nothing but the manifestation of genial life that was in God as the Son of God. Now you're, you are expressed after his word has come in you to light up this age. You are you expressing God's life in you because you are a son or a daughter of God. Now he's talking about the threefold structure of man, the body, soul, and spirit now. You get what I mean? Like he said, my eyes, my ears, my nose, who's me? <clears throat> we'll go into this more, more fully, don't worry. You're, you are sitting in the church tonight. Because your duty is to express God to this nation and this people and this neighborhood where you associate. Wherever you are, God knew that you would be here. Because you have to be one of his genes or his attributes. You had to be. If you got eternal life. <clears throat> then it was always eternal life. And God, before there was a foundation of the world, knew that you would be here. And when the word or the water, the washing of the water, the word fell upon you, uh, you were expressed in a being... Now you have fellowship with your father, God, just as you have with your earthly father. You are citizens of the king, not citizens, but your children, sons of the, and daughters of the living God, if it be that eternal life dwells in you. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go back and read what I missed. So let's start over. Now notice, in this world that is to come, for there is a world to come, just like your birth here, as I said, you were prepared. God knew you would be here. And now you know even things that your parents did. Though people think that isn't visited from generation to generation, but it is. <clears throat> now, the Bible says specifically that evil, visiting the sins of the fathers upon the children. But they fail to realize there is another visitation. And that visitation is not consequences, but people. Now, let's keep reading. Over in the book of Hebrews, I believe, about the seventh chapter there, Paul, spe this, there the writer, as I believe it was, was speaking of a great event <clears throat> that took place with Abraham that he paid tithes to Melchizedek when he was returning from the slaughter of the king. That's the kings of Sodom. And now he said that Levi was the loins of Abraham when he met Melchizedek coming from the slaughter of the kings. <clears throat> and then he reckoned that to Levi, and he put it to Levi's account, that Levi was paying tithes also when he, Levi, was in the loins of Abraham, his great-great-grandfather. Now, and he visits the sins upon the people. Now, if he visits the sins upon the people, there is no way he cannot visit the righteousness of the generations ahead. Like we saw that, that mother Eunice and that grandmother, that mother Lois and that grandmother Eunice, now vice versa. <clears throat> Lois the grandmother and Eunice the mother. There's a, there's a, there's a chain in there of natural election, natural foreknowledge, natural predestination that must come from a spiritual foreknowledge, spiritual election, and spiritual predestination. <clears throat> and he visits the sins of the people upon their children from generation to generation that won't keep his word. But the Bible also says he visits upon those that keep his word. Now, so Brother Branham is showing here <clears throat> there is perfect continuity in every single thing that God does 
And though he starts it in his foreknowledge, he has to come to a place where he works it all out here down below. And he's got to work it out in his own children. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if Abraham was the, was the great-grandfather of Levi, and Levi was already in Abraham, and you take it right back to Adam, then you can see the life that God breathed into Adam's nostrils, or Brother Branham said was the Holy Ghost, and at that time he became a living soul. He was not a living soul before. <clears throat> so therefore you, the gene, as a soul, comes down through the male. Now let's get this flat. If you want to get the article, I can give it you. But I've got great faith in Dr. Merkel. And Dr. Merkel absolutely shows way back, even in the, <clears throat> the chondriana, which goes before the mitochondria, <clears throat> precursors of what you want to call it, that actually they have the ability to be either male or female. Proving, as I've already said, you're looking at life. You're not looking at a male and a female. You are looking what brings forth that life. You follow me? Yeah, you do or you don't. Where does your female Holy Ghost go to? Where do you find female spirit? in the sense <clears throat> there's any type of procreation there. That was created, as Brother Branham said, for sex and reproduction, then leave it there. Presbyterian Church has already turned to Diana, of whom they said the seed was in her womb. As I was talking one day to Don Shear, and <clears throat> he had read the source by Michener, and Michener brings out when the, when the heathen they, and, they, and the Gentiles came in and raped the Jewish women, they then automatically said, it's no longer by the male, it's by the women. Hogwash and perversion. Sacrilegious talk. The woman doesn't contribute every, anything at all. <clears throat> but those things that lie there within her, physical qualities, the male alone carries the life. And if you don't believe it, let a woman try to get pregnant outside of male sperm. The science can go so far as to Bruce Bruce, I mean, it just won't produce an illegitimate, it'll produce a monster. And the Jews believe in that kind of crud too. We played the tape, the Ashley Red Heifer here one night and showed you. <clears throat> this burns me to a crisp. There's nothing but lies. That's crept right into this message till a man writes a letter saying the great hot revelation is going to sweep the world and guys like Levi are going to stand back with their chops drooling. There's the great female Holy Spirit. I got news for you. There really is no life that came down from God in that sun when that light formed from the essentiality <clears throat> and the intrinsicality of Almighty God was that man. Christ Jesus. And listen, let me tell you, you will never have a body outside of the seat that is there. And that seat was a male. He was circumcised. He shall see his seed prolong his days. Show me a female that can say that or anything said about it. I'm not against women. I'm for God. Let's get the word right here because you women can go to hell with <clears throat> as fast as a man any day. Women's lives destroyed everything, but they'll never destroy the word of the living God in vindication. They can have it. I'm not against women. I'm against Jezebel. She dressed a certain way and did certain things, but I get excoriated because I point out discrepancies. <clears throat> he not only visits the sins, but the blessings come upon those who are already inherited. Now, Brother Branham, using this illustration, says right down to the Gentiles now. <clears throat> right down to every single child of Almighty God, male or female, as far as their carcass is concerned. But Spirit of God, a part of God is their life is concerned, no matter who the carrier was. The carrier doesn't mean a thing. See, you were all pre-planned by God. Nothing happens by chance with God. In other words, can we have a stray doggie? 
<clears throat> can we have a stray pony? Can we have some kind of a hybrid? Well, couldn't this one just come in here because he made a choice? <clears throat> no way, shape, and form. Blessed is the man whom thou choose and callest to approach unto thee. My sheep hear my voice. You're not of my sheep, so therefore you can't hear, you can't come. You're all pre-planned by God. Nothing happens by chance with God. He knows all about it. It's all pre-planned. Planned for many generations back so that you could be here. Brother Branham said, back, 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 back. Fifty generations. Great, 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 great grandfather. Great, 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 great grandmother. Then down, 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 down to you to get that specific nature, <clears throat> which is what? Not the essential nature. Christ will prove that. But to get your own nature. Where you do one thing and not another and not do one thing and something else and so on. Part of God's multicolored flower garden. It's all pre-planned. Planned from many generations back so you could be here tonight. Did you know that? All the way back to Adam. Just think then back to God. Just think that you at one time, I'll repeat this again, you at one time were in your father, in the gene of your father. <clears throat> now there's genes in there that carry the life. Right? Okay. So then naturally, where does the soul life come down? Comes down by the male. Now that doesn't make him any great shakes. This is just a matter of propagation. And the Bible says flat, in the kingdom which is to come, there's neither male nor female, marriage or giving in marriage. That takes care of your Muslims and your Mormons, doesn't it? <clears throat> Mormons are going to have a heyday. They seal all the women and they want to have intercourse with them in the millennium and so on. Hogwash. They're going to have a sweet time in hell looking up, aren't they, when they're burning? Now, they won't be burning with sex. They'll be burning with the burning fire. Now, you think I'm rough? Tell me where I'm rough. You ever see painters paint pictures? <clears throat> You know Georgia Kelly, don't you? Anybody know her? She paints a beautiful, great, big brown-eyed Susans and flowers, and she makes them like soup plates. Somebody else comes along, an artist, take the size of a postage stamp and make a lot of little flowers. God's preachers are artists. If they paint a certain way, <clears throat> And there are certain positions, whether you like it or not, you're here, aren't you, this morning? You're foreordained to be here, and I'm foreordained to be here. And I'm foreordained to paint pictures a certain way. And I'm going to tell you flat on the judgment day, let's get it. People are going to be slapped a whole lot harder, and I myself can be. I want to ever slap anybody. So it's not sweet, sweet, and nice, 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 and a lie. And the truth does not get hurt and distorted because it's bang, bang, bang with a big rock and a hammer. <clears throat> Let's understand that. Now, Pentecostals in that meeting didn't get that. So you, you were pre planned many generations you could be here. Did you know that? Just think that you at one time, I'll repeat, you at one time were in your father's gene, and the gene in your father, and the gene in your father. Now, he didn't know you at that time. Neither did you. Now, watch this. He's talking about a person. <clears throat> Say, just a minute, I don't believe that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Would you believe the truth was sex was not meant for joy and for pleasure, but actually for reproduction? This is why when Owen spilt his seed upon the ground, his sister-in-law should have been impregnated by her. God killed him. Now, I'm not saying sex is wrong. I'm just letting you know the facts that Brother Branham taught and why he taught them, and they're all outlined here. <clears throat> I could say many things, but that's enough. You want to ask me a question, ask me any number of questions you want later on. Now, he didn't know you at that time, neither did you know him at that time, but you see, then you were put in the bedding ground. What was the bedding ground? The womb. What was put in there? Sperm was put in there. What's in that sperm? Life. Now, where does it come from? Who put it there? 
Go back to Genesis. I want to know where we're wrong. But you see, then you were put in the bedding ground, in the womb of mother, through holy wedlock. <clears throat> I've heard women lie when they take their vows. I've heard men lie. You young people are sitting here, some were not married by me and some were. How are your